What is going on guys? A couple months ago, I made a video on practical projects to learn AWS. One of the suggestions for projects was to create a live stock price tracker. Uh, so a way to basically track stock price movements over the course of time. So I finally decided to do this project and started for myself. And I just wanted to walk you through some of the processes that I went through in terms of designing and in the future building this application from end to end. So at first, I'd just like to walk you through my architecture diagram. Personally, that's usually what I like to do as my first step. I, I like to get all my ideas on paper and then kind of move pieces around. And uh, you'll see in a moment here, I, like I actually do some of the domain modeling and create some of the models that I'm going to be storing um, for my application. So let me run you through what's going on here and share with you some of my thoughts. Now, just before we get into that, um, I want to remind you what this project initially was and what my initial approach is going to be. It hasn't really changed much. So essentially, what I want to do is I want to create an application that allows me to register certain stock tickers or stock symbols like, you know, GOOG for Google, or I think it's Alphabet now, uh, FB for Facebook, AMZN for Amazon, on, so on and so forth. I want to make it so that I can register those with this application. And I also want to be able to register with other configuration that says um, for every interval, and these intervals can be one minute, five minute, 15 minute, 30 minute, um, I want to specify a change threshold percent. So for example, like 0.5%. And I want to say for this particular symbol, if the change from one minute to the next exceeds a certain percent uh, in either direction, positive or negative, I want to receive a notification about it, either through SNS, um, through my cell phone, or through an email. So those are the kind of loose requirements that I have for this application. Now, one more thing I want to add is that when I was initially kind of putting together my ideas for this application, I very quickly realized that I can easily put this thing together and whip it together and make it such that everything is hard coded. There's no dynamic content and it's just kind of stuffed and wired together in a pretty haphazard way. And then I decided I want to step back for a minute and I want to build this application as if it's something that I'm going to sell as a software, as a service, like to some company or some group of users. So then I started taking the approach um, such that, you know, I need to have a registry for all the users and all their configs and everything. I need to think about this a lot more uh, as opposed to just this very crude way that I was initially thinking about it. So you'll see that as I walk you through some of uh, the demos here, some of the content here. So let me uh, start talking about what I have over here. So everything uh, is initially going to be powered by this guy over here, the CloudWatch events. And um, initially, like I'm going to have all sorts of different uh, increments in the future. So like one minute, five minute, 15, up to 60 uh, and so forth. But I figure for now, let's just keep it simple. And we're just going to do one minute events. And then I'll just come back here uh, later on um, to hash out how it's going to work for some of the other ones. I already have some ideas in mind, but it's always good to keep it simple, get a working end to end before you add complexity to it. All right. So the kind of heart of the system here is something that's called the clock handler Lambda. This thing is going to be responsible for like receiving these tick events from uh, CloudWatch over here. And the first thing that this handler Lambda is going to do is that it's going to query app config. It's going to go up here to my symbol list app config. And it's going to get all unique symbols that are registered in the system. So in this app config, um, this is just a configuration service, helps you store and, and retrieve and deploy application configuration very efficiently. Also lets you have like rollback alarms and stuff too, which is pretty cool. Uh, anyways, this thing is going to store an array list of things like, you know, um, G-O-O-G for Google, uh, F-B for Facebook, uh, A-M, Z and for Amazon. Those are just the first three that I could think of here. So they're going to get all these unique symbols. So this is going to kind of be a registry of things that are symbols that are registered in my application. So now I have an array list in this clock handler Lambda. From there, for each one, we need to call a Yahoo Finance API, which is something I discovered over here. Uh, for this project, I'm going to be using Python, and I found a really cool library called Y Finance that makes this really easy. You just query for the symbol, and then you um, just it gives you a data frame back, so you need to extract the last closed price to get the last known price, essentially. So from there, now we're going to have a combination of, like, we're going to know A, M, Z, N, and it's going to be like, I don't know, what's the price, like $3,200 these days or something like that. We're going to know that for each of them, for Facebook and Google. Great. So now we have that in our clock handler lambda. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we're going to go to this table called stock state. 
And this thing is basically gonna be the holder of all of the prices over time, all right? So for the one minute um, ticks, it's gonna have like um, an Amazon entry for every single minute from 9.30, which is when the stock market opens, you know, all the way to 4.30. So we'll see like in this thing, we'll have, you know, an event like 9.31, uh, Amazon, AM, sorry, my writing's bad here, and then the, the price. Right, so we're gonna have you know another one for 932, and then the same thing repeats over and over and over again. Uh, so that's what we're gonna have here. But I also uh, did put out what I think the schema should be, and keep in mind this may change as I uh, figure this out a little bit more. So what the schema is gonna look like is we're gonna have the symbol, which is FB for Facebook. Uh, we have this this kind of interesting record that I created here, this interesting type, um, and it should be a string, it shouldn't be a double, uh, which is something I'm calling cadence stamp. And this is going to be our range key on our Dynamo table. And I'm gonna have the, the cadence that I am ticking for here. And then I'm also gonna have a timestamp. What this is gonna allow us to do is basically store multiple records under the partition key for FB, and then have a whole bunch of different records that exist um, that we can easily filter on that says like, get me the most recent one. And since we are using a range key with a time in here, um, you can do like starts with a certain value and to do sort ascending, and you're able to get the most recent records. Very, very handy. Um, so, and then we're also gonna have last close price, which is what the price was, and then when the event took place, which is basically the same thing that we had over here. So what I'm gonna do as part of my logic in this Lambda is that I'm gonna query the last ticks record. So if it's uh, 932 right now, I'm gonna query what was there before. So for the one for 931. Uh, so I'm gonna grab that so I have it in memory, and then I'm gonna insert in 932. So like this would be current minute, and this would be you know, previous minute. So now I have current and previous and I have that in memory and I've inserted uh, the most recent one so that, and the reason that I do this insert by the way is so that when the next tick occurs, we can get the most recent and everything will be up to date. Uh, just keep that in mind. So from here, now we have these two records in hand and we can move down to the next portion of this application. Um, and that is um, this ticks table that I've created. And it's gonna be the holder of the, the change state essentially, or the delta between these different percentages, uh, or between the delta percent between these different symbol events. And you can see here, uh, I want to calculate the change percent between the previous minute and the current minute, and then insert that record into the ticks table. And this is what the ticks table is gonna look like. And there's not gonna be like any fancy range key stuff. It's only gonna have one record for every um, symbol and cadence combination. So we're gonna be constantly overwriting this record, right? Like you can make it so that you can keep a history of it, but I don't really have a need to in this application. So I'm just gonna overwrite it every time. Um, actually, you know what? I may change my mind here and end up keeping the history because that may be useful to look at a little bit later on. Um, we'll see when I get to it. Now, in order to calculate this, it's very easy. I just compute the delta between the previous and the current, and then I just insert this record uh, into the ticks table. And then from there, in order to decouple like the clock handler lambda, I don't wanna do like extra stuff in here anymore uh, because there's too much business logic in here already. And there, we're starting to introduce some partial failure scenarios, which I wanna try and avoid. Uh, so I'm gonna set up a DynamoDB stream. So whenever any records get changed, so whenever uh, an insert or an update happens over here, uh, I'm gonna get a notification to our tick publisher Lambda. And this thing is gonna be responsible for figuring out, uh, I don't wanna show that yet, but figuring out um, who all the users are that are interested in change percents um, that exceed the thresholds that they've configured for this particular stock and cadence combination. So for example, I can expect, well, let's assume for a second, I'm gonna have many, many users at some point, right? And one of them may have a registry that says, uh, I wanna get notified when Facebook one minute um, goes over 0.1%. You know, that seems trivial. Uh, so an event like this, we can see this one was point. Uh, 2%. So that would mean that this event should trigger that person um, to receive a notification, right? So I need a place to store all that configuration, right? And that's what um, this user watch list table is down here. So like I, I kind of mentioned, ignore what's going on up here for now. Um, but like I kind of mentioned, 
the user watch list is going to store all that config. And so we're going to have a user ID. This is just going to be a UUID. And this is going to be our partition key. And then we're going to have a combination of a symbol cadence in a single value that is concatenated with an underscore. And this thing, uh, I'm actually going to set up a GSI on it so that I can search for this because um, like you'll see in a second, this is going to be very useful. Now, and then for, remember, this is per user. We're going to have rows per user. So each user has a change threshold percent. Um, in the example I was just giving, like I said, this would be 0.1. So let's just keep on going with that. Um, so assume that this user, and I think this was FB, F, B. Anyways, so in the previous example, this was the current configuration. So the reason why this GSI is useful is because if you look at this change event over here that it's going to be streaming, you know, in this direction over here, we're going to have access to the symbol and the cadence. And the question that we want to answer is who are all the users that I should notify that, you know, may have a change percent that could be affected by this event. That means I need to go and look them all up and figure out like who are all the users that care about this then I need to filter them down to the ones that have a uh, change percent that is greater than the current event. Um, so I need to figure out who I need to notify. Now, once I have all that list, it's eventually going to be returned all the way back here. And then now I have a list of users that I need to notify. So in this part, I'm not really sure what I'm going to use yet. Probably some kind of SNS topic for notifications. I know there's a way to set it up so that you can publish to particular users. I was also tinkering with the idea of using an SNS filter. I don't think that's going to work though. So I may have to come and revisit this a little bit later on. Um, and then that, of course, is just going to send a push notification to the device that a person is going to be listening on. Now, some other stuff that I do want to add, um, just some CloudWatch dashboards uh, so that I can keep a good pulse on how the system is doing. So I'm going to walk you through how to do all that. Uh, another thing that I want to go through is just do some extra documentation on the setup phase. So what it looks like to add uh, a new entry, maybe put a, like an API or something uh, or a particular Lambda function that's going to do this for me. So we can see that like there's a couple steps that I'll have to do. So uh, first we need to add a new entry to the app config, uh, which is just our registry for unique symbols we're going to be tracking. And then uh, we need to add the user's config to the user watch list. And then we need to subscribe the user with a symbol and cadence with the SNS filter. Not sure about this one yet, but that may be one of the steps that we need to do. But anyways, I'm going to be walking you through every single step here from uh, changes in the design to the development. So stay tuned to future videos. And if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.